dreamt of dining under the stars with Darth Vader or having a magical Hogwarts feast? Well, now you can with Fork Yeah. They're located just next to Disney World, and this private chef and catering service is more than just great food. Every meal is a themed experience from Disney classics to Harry Potter, Star Wars, and even Barbie the Movie. Led by expert chef Mia, Fork Yeah combines fresh, locally sourced ingredients with endless creativity. Make your next gathering unforgettable. And guess what? For our listeners, you'll receive 15% off your bookings from now until November when you mention my name, Giorgio Takanakis, at eatforkya.com. So head on over to eatforkya.com and book yourself an experience with amazing food that you and your guests will never forget. And don't forget to mention my name, Giorgio Takanakis, when you book for 15% off. Time to get real, reality TV aficionados. Welcome to the Giorgio Says Podcast. I'm your host, the one and only Giorgio Takanakis, and I'm here serving you the juiciest updates on all your favorite reality shows weekly, as well as the hottest pop culture trends, and even exclusive interviews that will leave you wanting more. This podcast will keep you on the edge of your seat. We definitely need to talk about this. The Giorgio Says Podcast starts now. All right, you guys, what is going on? No, really, what's going on? (laughs) Boy, oh boy. So just before we jump in, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Giorgio Says, the podcast. I am going to just jump right in. First off, I just want to let you guys know, I won't be recapping Real Housewives of Orange County on the podcast today because I recap it with Caitlin from Besties by Bravo on her podcast. And so we will be discussing the full recap on her podcast, but I do have my TikTok uh, quick uh, recap that's up on um, TikTok and Instagram. So if you want to go check that out, you can. I want to use this episode to kind of rant a little bit if I can. Um, And I hope that it's okay with you guys. I just want to kind of talk through a couple things because there is stuff going on in the world of Bravo, if you will, and not so much within the Bravo universe, like the Bravo Lebs. This is more around the content creators that discuss Bravo and There's a couple stories floating around currently. um, Well, I don't want to say floating around. There is two stories happening um, that are interesting. I am going to dive into the one regarding Heather and Justin and Jeff Lewis on Caitlin Besties by Bravo's podcast as well. We're going to touch on that. And I'll touch a little bit on it. I I'll be honest with you guys. I I I saw that it was a daily update happening because Donna Bowling, shout out to Donna Bowling and Jeff Lewis Obsessed. Um, they've been covering it pretty extensively. So shout out to them. Um, because when I was doing my catch up on everything, uh Donna in particular was very, very, very good about kind of bringing in the timeline and she covered it very well and so did Jeff Lewis obsessed so shout out to both of them and thank you for that because it helped me um absorb everything and it also saved me from having to go and become a patron to Heather McDonald's uh whatever paywall podcast situation so um always appreciate that But nonetheless, I really want to talk about, and I did make a post about this on my Instagram because I felt like I needed to, and I, it's not something I normally would even comment on, but this specifically for me, I felt like there was something about it that just rubbed me wrong. I don't know. I'm just going to be honest. It rubbed me wrong. And yesterday... Yesterday, I got messages from quite a few of you because a lot of you who 
follow me on Instagram, also are subscribed to my YouTube and obviously other people's YouTube channels. And a lot of you are fans of a lot of the other content creators that, you know, this is a very small world. So, um, but nonetheless, you guys sent me Dana Wilkie's, uh, she did a YouTube video yesterday and you know, it, it was basically, I guess she was going to give us the information. It just looked like a normal Dana Wilkie video where she's got tea on some sort of like situation that went down. And apparently this one was around, you know, her having some sort of tea on the fight that I guess allegedly went down between um, Zach Peter from No Filter um, podcast and up and Adam who both have podcasts and YouTube channels and Instagrams and, and all the fun stuff. I don't have personal, um, relationships with any of the parties like Dana, Zach or Adam. Um, and, uh, that's personal and I've not collaborated with either, um, with neither of them, but so I don't have any, like, stake in anything in that way i you know i kind of stay in my own lane for the most part but nonetheless watching the video well first off and i said this on my post on instagram to me it came off already not objective because the thumbnail says a lot at least to me it does like when i see a thumbnail and listen i'm not i am not the best thumbnail maker so i'm not gonna i'm not sitting here trying to toot my own horn okay i'm talking about youtube thumbnails but her YouTube thumbnail automatically came off to me as this is going to be where, like it came off like she's already siding with Adam and Jason. Again, I don't have any relationship or issue or no, I don't know any of these people personally. So I'm going off of what was presented in Dana's video yesterday. Okay, so she starts going in on the podcast event that was being filmed for Sheena and and I guess Adam from Up and Adam and his husband Jason uh, were there as part of it because they were host like Adam was hosting and kind of covering in between you know from her angle she was saying that he was basically there to help keep it all cohesive and when she would go do you know a wardrobe change or something like that in between things he was kind of the the person that kind of helped keep it all going great so but then it goes into this from there so let me back up one second so the i talked about the thumbnail how it was like already giving because the reason why I found it odd was that you're discussing a group of, you know, two parties essentially, but then one of the parties you don't bother putting the their picture on your thumbnail, which is odd because it's like, well, you're talking about, like, if you're telling a story, like if I were to tell the story, if someone sent me the story and like, I felt obliged to make a 10 minute, and 52 second video around it for my YouTube channel, which I would never because it's not, it's like, it's not that deep, you know, it, unless you're the parties involved. But like, generally speaking, like, it, like, there's nothing to really say, you know. But anyways, she doesn't have his picture included on the thumbnail. It's just Adam and Jason. And then she has a picture of Sheena because obviously this is Sheena's event. So then we open with the video, but then the opening of the video is just a, a, I guess, podcast cover art of Adam and Jason. And she kind of goes and speaks, you know, very kindly about them, very highly of them. I'm not sure if they are friends, Dana and Adam and Jason. I feel like maybe if they're not friends, they definitely both live in South Florida. So I can't imagine they have not ever met up or at least spoken. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is because based on the story that she was giving around what allegedly occurred at the bourbon room for Sheena's event, 
was that essentially, you know, she gives a backstory on why Adam and Zach are no longer friends and, or not, I mean, she didn't really give specifics on why. I guess she said something business-wise kind of didn't work out. And so they weren't in a good spot, you know, Jason, Adam, and Zach. So I guess at the bourbon room, there was, I guess someone had said that Zach was going to show up with a t-shirt on that had like all these text messages on it. Um, which that's really weird because it's like, well, why would he, I'm just going off of this objectively because it just like, to me, if it doesn't make sense, I don't understand. Like what would be the point of wearing the text messages on a t-shirt? But nonetheless, he didn't end up wearing that from her story because she says that he ended up wearing some, what she called like a disco type outfit with like sunglasses and that he had brought a producer friend of his that is I guess casting him for a reality show around a group of I guess gay men and we who we ho who are I guess fabulous and doing their thing to the fullest so but it that part was also very specific and then she says that the the source was a Bravo Lab friend of hers. And I'm just kind of, I guess, well, I guess I would need to ask her what her definition of a Bravo Lab is because I don't, if we're talking like real Bravo people that are on the shows and shit, like I, and this, again, not a dig at anybody here because I'm a content creator. We all have had interactions at one point or another or consistently with different Bravo lebs of all statures, all like past, present, all of that. Okay. This has nothing to do with that. That's a given. We do this. We talk about it. It's natural. But I don't see a Bravo leb getting pulled into leaking or i don't want to say leaking but like dishing on drama that allegedly occurred between two content creators i just don't i don't like that's why i'm like well what is your definition of a bravo lab because if you know if if that's being used loosely because now we're saying by association maybe this person's a bravo lab i then i i guess Maybe I need to be updated on the definition, I guess. At least what her definition of Bravo Leb is, because I just don't see a Bravo Leb calling her up and being like, oh my God, you're never going to believe what happened at the bourbon room. I just don't see it. Because like, why would, what, what are they getting out of that anyway? What is, how is that going to give them any, like, what's the point? I guess. I guess I'm just looking for the point in that part of it also there's clearly like so much detail that how would like if it was just a bravo lab how would they know all these details how would they know that that was a producer friend of his or know who he was unless they just knew him personally as well but like it just felt like this information like the story was told to her by the other party and the other party i mean adam and jason so and one or both she got the story from from one or both of them it that's what it feels like listening to it again i don't have i'm not like in there like i don't chat or do all that stuff so i don't know who's done what to who um all I can say is from the point of like where Dana sits, I think it's really like, I don't know. I think it's ballsy. I think it's in the video, you're really creating a narrative based on something that was told to you. And listen, I know we all talk and gossip and this is what we do. We do it 
surrounding our housewives, our Bravo webs, all of that. I get it. And we can even be shady at times. But I felt like this video was was very specific to try to paint a picture of someone in a bad light. And as I'm speaking, people are commenting and letting me know that I guess Zach did a live discussing this um, Dana video, I guess. So I will go watch it. But yeah, no, I just, I don't, I think it's, it, it like gives me the X because first of all, it's like, well, that doesn't need to be public information. And I don't know why she's jumping in on it. So it, to me, it feels like someone said it to her to say, to send a message. And it's like this person's, it's like someone's hiding behind a paywall and it's not, a, I mean, the video felt very sponsored by, you know, I felt like there should have been a disclaimer, like, allegedly, guys, allegedly. I mean, I'm just going off my gut and I watched it twice. Okay, so I got, what, 22 minutes that I'm not going to get back because I wanted to just, I didn't really, and I just didn't understand the angle and what the point of it was. Also, like, it just, it came out of left field. Like, why, why are you posting? Like, this is, like, there's so many things to discuss. This is what you wanted to discuss. That's the other part that I find weird. And then I revert back to the thumbnail and I'm like, yeah, no, this is really like, then just come out and say, these are my guys. These are my friends. And I heard this. And if this is true, like, like, fine your friends but to come out publicly and, and make like say all these things and like I don't know I just find it like what's the point and it it's just icky I don't understand the need to like have to like speak for another person again allegedly not I have no confirmation that that's what it is it just feels that way so allegedly she was fat, but it's not a Bravo lab. I don't feel in my in my gut or in my spirit that that a Bravo lab would get themselves involved in gossiping about content creators. I just don't. I don't see that. I will be discussing the whole layered feud with Heather versus Jeff Lewis versus Justin bit on the podcast with Caitlin besties by Bravo. Yeah. It seems like there's some, something's in the air or something, right? Like all these content creators, like everything's like, what's going on? Are we all like auditioning for a reality show and we don't know about it yet? Does it benefit Dana to like bring this story forward and try to like subtly like advocate for one party specifically? Like, I don't know. What's the game there? So again, is it just like, this is my friend. I'm going to defend my friend. I'm going to use my platform to defend my friend kind of thing, allegedly, because they told me the story and I was like, ah, uh, I don't know. Also, Dana is Dana. It's Dana Wilkie. So you got to take what she says with a grain of salt anyway. It just gives me the X. That's all I'm going to say. But I didn't find it to be objective. It, it was clearly like there was a clear stance there. Um, what else is going on? Oh, I do want to mention that um, our baby gorgeous was having a chat with Naomi Campbell at the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show last night. So that puts Lisa Barlow now on a entirely new level. Okay, so shout out to baby gorgeous for meeting the icon, the legend, the queen herself, Naomi Campbell. Um, because that is like creme de la creme. Anyways, it's Thursday, guys. Thirsty Thursday. Um, I may have to break the rule. I may have to have a drink. Um, it's been really hot here as well. So I'm just kind of like, oh my gosh, it's like September. It's 96 degrees outside. What's happening? Maybe that's why like 
So why they're just flipping out everywhere? Is that what's got everybody up in a in a bunch? I don't know. All I know is tomorrow's Friday, and we are closing another week. I also want to remind you guys that before I let you guys go, that if you're not following me on TikTok, please do so because I go there first for all my updates and episode recaps and such. And also follow me on Instagram at Giorgio Says because I share a lot of personal stuff on there as well. So if you want to be nosy and get up in my business, you can follow me there. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's okay. You still have time. You can hit the subscribe button right now and then make sure you just hit the notification bell so you don't miss when I upload. If you're watching this podcast, hello. You can watch this on Spotify or my YouTube channel. And if you're listening, thank you so much. If you feel obliged and you love this podcast, you can give me a good rating on whatever platform you're listening to this on. I am so happy tomorrow's Friday, you guys. I can't even tell you. And what I'm more excited about is I'm going to be recapping Real Housewives of Orange County with Caitlin from Besties by Bravo. So make sure you check her episode out when it drops because it was it was a good episode, I have to say. But until tomorrow, guys, I will talk to you on the next episode. Bye!